Uh, so we're going to be working on this uh, Danny Moonstar that was floating around a while ago. Uh, Marissa, I think, did the flats for it um, like a month ago, and I was like too busy, and we still had the Spider-Man thing to get done, and I didn't want to work on this without finish finishing Spider-Man 2099, so I couldn't really get to it. I believe that these flats are hers. Um, I don't know if that's for sure or if I've imagined that, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm confident I'm, uh, I'm moving some windows around. I still haven't like settled on a, a layout for how to stream. And I know you're, you're not at all interested in that and you just want to see the product. So <laughs> let's get to it. Uh, yeah. So. I want to use streaming as an opportunity to try out new things, you know? Um, oh, you were going to listen to a podcast about a show that's been off the air for like 10 years, 15 years. Instead, you, I, you made the right choice by coming here. This is new. This is hot. This is now. Uh, but the West Wing is very good. So, I have these watercolor brushes that I basically, like, haven't touched from Kyle Webster. Um, I was never on the West Wing. I think, I think they made a real big mistake, to be perfectly honest. Um, so, uh, I was going to, and I'm, I'm going to tweak the flats a little bit to how I, how I want it. Um. The X-Men X is red, right? I think it is. Red and black? I think it is. Um, I'm going to red up that scarf. I kind of want these to be, like, white, maybe? Um, yeah, so... Here's the thing with the watercolor brushes. They like watercolors. The more you put down, they like um, get darker and darker, and they kind of like multiply down. And it might be fine. Like if I was gonna watercolor something in real life, I'd put down all the color first, and then I'd start putting down the line art, line art to kind of like go with the color. I'd sketch it, watercolor it, then line art. And I feel like I can't really like. There's like a reaction to the shapes that you're putting down when you watercolor. Um, not that I've like done a ton of watercoloring in the past. So I'm going to use watercolor brushes, but I'm going to try to use them uh, a little differently. Um, before we start doing all that, uh, we're going to we're going to tweak some of this. Um, yeah, so. I'm going to try to use the watercolor brushes as like treat them as more like texture brushes, which is like kind of cheating, but like I was messing with them a little bit off screen and it was like a little bit of a disaster. Not that this isn't going to be a disaster. You got front row seats to like me try and shit out. So enjoy. Uh, but if it is a disaster, then we can fall back on like old techniques and tried and true stuff. We'll make something usable by the end of, of this, you know, um, it'll look good. And, uh, I was wanting to get to this. It was on the back burner. And then the new mutants trailer came out today and I got all hyped. I'm hyped for that new mutants. It's a, it looks like a horror movie where, uh, they're creating their own horrors, which is like totally awesome and a really cool angle for, uh, X-Men. And I, man, I kind of feel like, like all the X-Men stuff, uh, is really awesome lately between like Legion and Logan and like Fox has started to like mine the X-Men franchise for like really interesting stuff um 
And I honestly didn't think we were ever going to get, like, a New Mutants thing. And, like, the Gifteds got, like, freaking uh, Blink in it and stuff. Like, you know, there's all these, like, bizarre, like, uh, you know, second-tier X-Men that I thought were, like, never going to see the light of day. And and now, now they're around, I guess, because Fox is like, how can we milk this property? And we, we, we kind of screwed up our regular movie franchise, so how do we, how do we recover? So, I don't know. Not, they didn't really screw it up. It just got kind of lame. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Rico, please. No backseat coloring. I mean, I guess you can kind of backseat. I you can kind of backseat. It's a loose rule. I just don't want like a whole chat of like you fucked up, Nick. You fucked up. I don't. I don't want that. That's that's not where we want to be. Um. Also, like I was looking up reference. <laughs> I was looking up reference for uh, Danny Moonbeam or Moonstar here and. I almost said Moonbeam. That's not right. Uh, and it was all like her skin tone was like wildly different across books. And like she's like Native American, right? Like I don't understand why she's like a whitey in a lot of these books. Um, Maybe because it's, like, early comics and people weren't aware that they shouldn't do that or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it, what it was, but it was, it was kind of weird. Um, yep, that's what, that's what it was. Uh, so. Alright, how are we going to tackle this? Should I start with a wash and then let's start by preserving the flats so that when, when, if a good old 80s racism, yeah. Co comic book whitewash, excellent. Ugh. Uh, I guess we're just gonna, we're just gonna go because like, I don't. I don't know, man. Like I said, this is this we're gonna be all over the place. <laughs> uh, I'm fi I'm filling the chat with con confidence right now. Um. So. Let's let's figure out what brush we're using. Um, what button do I press to, what do I press to get the flats to the alpha channel? Um, I just cut and paste them into their own, own alpha channel. So the alpha channel, like, you know, shows up in black and white. So it's not, like, perfect, but it's, like, close enough to kind of, like, pull the flats if you want it. Like, these might be a little close together. You know, her eye and her lip might be a little close together, but, like, it's, like, far enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's like good enough that I can be like, okay, now we just select our eyes. Um, yeah, so that it's just like cut and pasting it in. Um, just deselect the black channel, select all, cut, paste, done. Uh, and the little the little buttons down here. I don't know if you can see that down in the lower right hand corner. It's this guy right here. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, let's figure out what brush we're using. Not that one. Um, yeah, this is like going to be like, I, I, I feel like when we're experimenting with the watercolors, it's going to be like, what brush should we use? I don't know. Let's look at brushes for like 30 minutes. <laughs> so strap in. We, we use in a menu. <laughs> oh, you can. Well, I know, Ziggy, I know you can make a channel, but, like, I, you know, other people might watch this. Just saying. 
You're not you're not the only guy I know. I know plenty of dudes. Splatter dents, that is something. So the reason that I, I kinda wanted to do this, like mess around with these watercolors, is uh I was using um On a wrestling cover that I was working on, I had to put like scratches and scuffs. <laughs> uh, I was putting scratches and scuffs into like a uh, truck, and I didn't quite know like how I was going to use it. I was just looking for like a ratty kind of brush, and I I used this like gouache brush that I never used. That was like it was like heaven on earth i i don't know how i avoided it so i was like you know what let's let's like slow down and um you know i keep changing the flow so here's here's a danger with the with the hotkeys so my point was i was like hey maybe i should slow down and like you know think about the brushes that i'm using and uh, maybe try some new ones out because chances are I'm like missing out on like all these cool stuff. So the brushes for the for the um, watercolor stuff are all mostly set to like multiply, and when you do that, you like darken as you go. And the more layers you, or the more marks you put down, the darker you get. So I just switched it to normal because like I want the texture, but I don't necessarily want the like you know the layering that watercolors do which is a little bit of a cop out i admit because <laughs> now we're just kind of like painting with a textured brush like like we would in photoshop anyway um but you know we're here so like i said it's, it's my stream bear with me uh I think dropping the opacity opacity is like a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. So let's try and just like carve out Danny's face a little bit. Um, we're gonna try it a couple different ways to get this to work right. Um, I think that it's gonna take a lot of like experimentation to get like everything I want out of these brushes uh, and I also kind of have like an idea of where I want to take this uh, but I'm open to the brushes like ending up a kind of weird mess and then like rolling with that so I don't want to I don't want to like like I was thinking about like doing this like desaturated pop the eyes kind of thing so um because like her power is to make your like nightmares come real <laughs> which is that's a conversation starter uh, oh what do, what do you do oh i control the weather oh what do, what do you do oh i make all your worst nightmares come alive oh fun so like you can make it snow on like a nice day and we can go sledding and you can just create all horrors, all manner of horrors. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good it's a good power for the new movie. The new movie looks sweet. Like people were hating on it on Reddit, but I I don't know, man. I think people are just haters. People be hating. So, um kind of like how uh I was using the other brush this one's um, on uh, the last stream when I was doing the guy's hair. Uh, it was like kind of a rough brush and it was kind of hard to control. And this brush is kind of the same way. It's it's like really splotchy, as if you can't tell by looking at this. It's really splotchy, but it's got a lot of texture to it. And so um, I think we're going to try to try a different maybe like a rough so like ooh, 
This stuff, this stuff looks cool. Why was I not using these brushes? Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna try to smooth all this out. Like, I, I feel like in the last couple of years, um, I've been trying to, uh, soften just in general. And like under the, like over the eyes and under the nose, like that's the kind of stuff that like doesn't need to be soft softened. Um, that's the kind of stuff that like, you know, you can put like a nice hard highlight in or a uh, hard uh, shadow in. Um, how have I not been using these brushes? We gotta step up the game, folks. Because these are these are super fun and uh, kind of kind of awesome. Um, it's almost like real life painting. Like Kyle Webster thought of that and then gave me the brushes and then I bought them and then just chucked them out the window. <laughs> uh, your Photoshop's too old. Yeah, man. Well, here's the thing. I talked about Brushbox a little bit in the last episode, uh, and I find that it's a nightmare to use. Um, it's like very slow, and I wish, I wish it would be like, here's the last brush you used. Here's the last brush. Here, like, have like a memory of the last like ten brushes you used, so that way you could kind of keep track and like hold on to four or five brushes at a time. Um, I mean, you can make like custom kind of palettes to it, but, uh, like custom brush sets out of, out of what you got going on. Um, but man, also, yeah, you keep notes. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. I don't even bother keeping notes. I'm like, that, that shit's, would, them shits would get lost. <laughs> um, So yeah, uh, but every time I every time I open Brushbox, also, and granted, I haven't given it the update. Um, <laughs> uh, my fiance is uh, at the doctor's office across the street right now, and some kid in there is just yelling, "Get me out of here!" <laughs> so I'm sure she's having a real pleasant experience. <laughs> Um, that was her sending a text. Uh, but yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Brushbox. Brushbox almost crashes my computer every single time I use it. So it's got that going for it. I don't know if that's a feature. I haven't updated to the new one. I don't know if it'll make it better, but I imagine my like 15 or 10 year old computer is, is not going to be happy about updates either. <laughs> Yeah, rest in peace, kid. You were the best of us. Uh, all right. So we're kind of doing this in a way that I don't really... Um, what is it? Top bar is right justified. <laughs> Uh, you charmer, so that the paintbrush blending mode isn't hidden under my beautiful face. Well, what do you, what do the people want? What do they want, Ziggy? That's the thing, is like, we're here to give them what they want, and like, far be it from me to take that away from them, just because you want to see the paintbrush blending mode. Um, but yeah, it's weird that you, you can like, see it when I drop it down. Shit. I should probably fix that, huh? Maybe put my face in the bottom corner. We're going to work on that. We're going to work on that. Um, most of this is going to be normal. Uh, my plan... Oop, that is not the brush I want. Uh, my plan... It's I'm going to be bouncing between, like, 
normal and screen mostly. I bounce between normal, screen, and multiply. If it's darker, it's usually multiply. If it looks like it's it's the same uh, color that I'm pulling, like if I'm pulling colors from all over the place, I'm usually set to normal. And then if it's if I'm putting in highlights, it's usually set to screen. But I will fix that in the future. We'll we'll move the camera to Photoshop so you can see what's going on in Photoshop. Um, but yeah, uh, like right now it's set to normal, but we'll we're gonna tweak just a minute. So right now I'm doing something that I always advocate not to do, which is like working on each individual piece at a time. Um, like we just did her face kind of, and um, we're working on her scarf now. And like, it's, it's a good way for color to get a little disjointed and out of place. But like, I'm kind of treating it like, uh, like it's, it's less about, uh, the, the color we're putting down. Cause I kind of want to wash the whole thing at the end or maybe, Oh, we could do a adjustment layer. Maybe. I don't know. We'll play around with it. But like, yeah, this brush is like, uh, uh, what a bunch of bullshit. This one's set to normal. That's fantastic. But like, yeah, this needs like actual like craft to it because otherwise the shape of the bandana like won't read rather than just kind of like splotchiness you know um we can kind of get away with that on the face because it's got like a lot of subtle uh valleys and you know the face is complex and it's got many planes and you know whatever uh but yeah, so what I was saying was is that like I want to get to a point where, um, and we're just going to put a bunch of texture down um, on the earrings, but what I'm, what I'm saying is, is like this is not something that I normally would do. A lot of times I start with washing the thing in a color and then kind of like going from there um, rather than the reverse, which is kind of what we're going to do, but I'm hoping that... Um, by using the watercolor brushes, uh, then washing the thing, then we can put highlights on top of the washes. We still retain some of that watercolor texture to it. That's the that's the goal anyway. We'll see if that actually works that way. Um, let's just darken the crap out of these things. Because uh, it was not... It's this, like I said, this brush is tough to control. So we're going to be kind of trying to just very, keep it very, very general. And then we'll, we'll pop in highlights and stuff with like a, a more, uh, and more interesting brush. Real watercolor dry multiply. Let's see what it is normal. Yeah, this is like, I need something a little more narrow. Something like that. See, this is the thing too, is like, so I'm trying out all these new brushes, right? But like, I'm not keeping track of them at all. I'm hoping that just through sheer force of will, I'll like maintain uh, some of these and incorporate them into my process. But we'll see if that actually happens. Um with enough experimentation, it'll just not be experimentation. Hopefully that's kind of where my head's at. Uh, that like, you know, we try enough stuff out. Eventually we're not trying it out anymore. Eventually it's just, we've incorporated the things that, that are good in the process into like what we're doing.
but yeah it's starting to take shape um I think the hair is going to be the hardest part only because I kind of want to just like black it in because she's got like dark hair and she, she's got that thing in like the 80s in comics when um, somebody had dark hair. It was uh, blue. Um, because of that, I for like the first f like three years when I was coloring comics every person who had black hair I colored blue because that was just like my mind was just like oh 80s blue blue for black hair and then uh I forgot I think it was Paul as a Seda who was like why are you doing that <laughs> you have you have gray just put a dark gray in there you're fine and I was like oh shit the old comics like program my brain wrong Uh, so, so there's all these brushes that are in this set where it's like like this brush that mark I don't know what to do with that like I mean maybe it's fine for like actual people who are like actually watercoloring but like this is such a weird weird thing like and then you layer it and it's just like it's this translucent it's a really like incredible complex brush but I don't know if that ever is going to be anything that we ever want to deal with um, all right let's let's do the yellow let's take like a red and just kind of like pull the pull a grad through the whole thing um yeah i think you're right rico but that's the thing is like you know there's good brushes in here that like you can kind of repurpose to coloring uh that i think that i'm it's not not what we wanted at all uh that i think that i should be re if i was like you know had had more time to practice like I'm doing now like I'm trying to to do uh that maybe I would I would do those things like you know um repurpose the brushes to like what I want out of them like this brush is totally fine it's like a little bit weird but it's like fine you know like we can uh oh hey uh Wes I, I I'm gonna mispronounce your name it's gonna be I apologize <laughs> Wes Wes Hoyt uh is in the chat this is her drawing and uh we're taking a shot at it hey thanks for letting us do that um yeah, I think that as a as a colorist, you you kind of have to um, use the brushes in ways that like are not intended. What Wishoyo? Did I do it? Did I do it all right? Wishoyo? I like I broke up the syllables in the fucking weirdest way. I apologize. <laughs> um, we've been over this in in this chat that I am bad at pronouncing names in in chat, whether they be real life or otherwise you know uh and so i apologize for that but thank you for very very much for uh letting us you know work on this and uh are you hyped for the new mutants or not so much because i don't even know if the um person they cast for the new mutants is uh native american for uh for uh danny moonstar Like, I was... There's not a whole lot of, like, information about the person they cast. Um, so I couldn't really tell. I don't know. But it, it, it would suck if they, like, you know, one of the few Native Americans in the Marvel Universe got, like, whitewashed. But, you know, Hollywood...
Oh, you did. Yeah, I uh, I read some New Mutants as a kid, but uh, it's been a long time. Uh, I need a I need a refresh. I gotta I gotta get a refresh before um, the movie comes out. The movie looks fantastic though. So that brush was okay, but I don't know if that's really working for me. Hmm. I'm looking at like rakes like maybe <laughs> maybe we just go full brush set just go freaking crazy I think the the soft edge wet 60 is kind of where we want to be um, oh yeah Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. Not that she, you know, like, I'm sure she can do a good job, like, not, you know, she's an actress. She'll, she'll act, but it's still kind of weird. Um, you know, it's the whole, uh, ghost in the shell, uh, uh, we're gonna cast, uh, what's her name? The the woman who played black widow I, scarlett johansson as an as an asian person like it's that whole bullshit all over again yeah i don't know but the new movie looks great regardless um of what opportunities people get uh I'll, i'm sure i'll still see it eventually i still haven't seen freaking guardians I'm, I'm working too much. That's the problem. I'm doing this. This happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder, like, uh, how much of our heritage is going to be featured in the movie, too. It would be nice to see. Um, I admittedly don't know a whole lot about Native American heritage and would love to see more of it represented just so that I can learn a little bit, you know? For those of you who don't know, I grew up in a town in Connecticut that was like 99% white. Uh, so my uh, my background for like you know being around a lot of uh, different uh, races and things like that is, is very very lacking. It, it's a, it was essentially like college, and then like. I moved uh, into the in into Philadelphia, and it was like, oh, this is this is what regular real life is like when you get out of like the crazy taxed district in Connecticut. Um, not to disparage anybody who's there, it's very very nice, but it's not real life. Oh, it is the Nick Phil Magi. It is the Nick Phil. Uh, right exactly Ziggy like you'd think they just cast you know a Native American character as a Native American character just to be like we don't want to deal with like the internet backlash like beyond the, the ethical reason like I don't know just be like I don't want to deal with this so we're just going to not not open the can of worms kind of thing Yeah, so this is this is the danger that I was having with this brush. Like, it worked pretty well on her face, worked okay in the ban bandana, but, like, we're starting to get, like, splotchy, you know? Um, so I feel like once we wash the whole thing, we're going to, like, really start to get into uh, tweaking it. Um, yeah, so... Sorry, I'm catching up on chat. Right, like her her origin is very much wrapped up in like who she is, so I can't imagine that they won't address it. 
Um, wow. Yeah. I can imagine a lot of native fans are invested in this film and I hope they do it right too. I, I hope they, they, cause you know, it's like, I feel like it, it's just, it's like, it's easy to get right. You know, you like hire somebody who is part of the heritage. You read a little bit about it and then you go like, it's not, it's not rocket science. I don't know, but I, I've never made a movie. So I, you know, I don't know about any of that stuff. So, huh. I think, I think my dream of, uh, watercolor brushes are the future is, uh, kind of dead <laughs> I think maybe if I was like actually watercoloring this would be like really interesting but like like I said in the beginning like I feel like the process of watercoloring means that like you pencil you watercolor the pencils and then you ink on top of it if you're gonna ink at all um man I want to make I want to make the hair like jet black but we'll we'll see we'll see what's going on let's let's just gesture this stuff in and uh, we'll figure it out from there um. <laughs> magi please yeah I you know uh, if you're looking for a good source on digital watercoloring I don't know if I'm your best bet uh, this is, this is me like experimenting just as much as, uh, anything else. Like I, I have like, I bought this set cause I, I figured there'd be some like good texture brushes in there and there are, but like, I'm trying to find them basically. There's like, it's a giant set and it's not built for this. So we're trying to figure it out. You know what? I might use that wash brush uh, if I can remember what it, what one it was Crot was it bristly let's find out yeah like that kind of has like a little bit of a like eh, that's not so great Crumple stilt skin. What is that? That is not what we want, but that's interesting. Uh, I feel like I, I accidentally got Halloween brushes. I didn't even know it. We don't want half tones. Gouache, gouache. I wish I remember what that great gouache brush I had before was. Gouache a go go? No. Ooh, I think this is it. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Uh, to make profit. Yeah, we're gonna in twenty minutes. I'm gonna be frustrated by by the things that we have set up. Uh, I kind of think I'm gonna get in here and start really darkening up the hair eventually. Um. Man, I hate that you switch tools and I gotta like run down the list again. Um, oh, this was the brush. Yeah, this has like, it's like super freaking chunky. Uh, we're gonna set it to screen and put some highlights in. Yeah, the thing is like, I don't know, kind of fun. It has like a, a tooth to it. Here, I'll zoom in. That's like really interesting. But now, now I'm giving her gray hair, so let's not do that. <laughs> 
kind of want to just we're just gonna see what happens when we like really darken it up new layer what if we like put a grab through it yeah yeah now we're talking Yeah, I think that's I think that's starting to look good. So we used a bunch of texture. We kind of like I mean, like watercolors. Oh, we didn't we didn't do the braids. We got to do the braids. Um like watercolors and when I when I watercolor in real life, um so here's here's the thing. When I was in college and I had to watercolor in real life for some projects, it was uh, infinitely frustrating for me. It was just really, really difficult. So, um, but I was like, hey, maybe I'm a better person now. But just like college, it ends up splotchy and weird. So uh, maybe I'm not, maybe I just need more practice. I don't know. Uh, we're trying new things. Now, I was gonna just like wash the whole thing with a color. And the, the reason that I was gonna do that was um, it kind of like unites the palette, but it's gonna end up also drowning things out. Um, I'm a little bit worried because there's like a lot of subtlety in there, but there's also like some subtlety that I don't really like. Like I don't think that her suit looks fantastic right now. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna wash it and then kind of like slowly slide into like use this as a base we've experimented with some watercolor and then maybe slowly slide into our regular kind of shtick with coloring uh fall back on the the old like tried and true um but i also kind of wanted to like try to do an adjustment layer and see how that is um that's this little button on the bottom here uh, so you click this and you can make a new layer uh, and we could try huh solid color let's do like a like a like a blue maybe like that blue All right. and then can we where's the slider There should be a uh, slider with it. Oh, I guess we can just mess with the layer mask, but I thought I could kind of like tweak the, the blue there as well, but I guess we can just mess with the layer mask. Um, so that's like 50% right now. Um, properties panel. Thanks, Ziggy. I mean, I'm in it. Oh, oh. Feather. That's, that's nuts. It just says, like, no mask. I can't, like, tweak anything. I can only tweak the mask. I can't tweak the, the actual layer. Um, You know what? Screw this thing. We're just gonna we're gonna do it old school. So I was thinking about kind of where we wanted to end up. And I kinda wanna like pop the eyes, make them um <laughs> it's Pexy Rika, you know, if you move your mouse cursor where my mouse cursor is, it's like we're holding hands. But don't do that. That'll make it weird. 
Um, yeah, let's. <laughs> there's there's a lot of romance in the chat right now. Um, I kind of wanted to. All right, all right, all right. We are gonna we are gonna do some layer masks. Let's do a hue saturation layer mask. Yeah, see that popped up. The preset popped up fine. Um, let's not do that. We're we're trying stuff out. We're experimenting. That's what this stream is about. This is about experimentation and panic, and we've got both on lock. Um, let's try something. Let's try something weird. Let's tweak the levels a little bit so that we can kind of make it, uh, you know, bring up the highs a little bit, bring down the lows. Uh, let's um, kick it into grayscale, flatten it. Okay. Trust me, folks, I'm a professional. All right, take it out of grayscale paste the grayscale in and then mask it yes uh and then we're gonna we're gonna tweak the mask um yeah yeah right yeah the problem isn't that like i had the problem the problem is is that the layer the solid color adjustment layer is is a piece of shit <laughs> so uh let's yeah let's tweak the mask Oh, we're set to screen. So I was thinking about using this and kind of like working from here, but here's another thing that I've never done is uh, kind of like tweaked. Uh, something like this. Pop the earrings, pop the eyes, and actually, we can actually, so the, here's the thing about uh, layer masks, <laughs> mind equals blown, <laughs> yeah, so we like desaturated the whole thing, copied it into, into the, on top, and then made the desaturated version into, in, like the grayscale version, into like a layer mask, so now we're just like, it desaturated everything, but now we're picking out like where we want the color to pop. Um, and we can, I was using like if, yeah, that's what the layer mask looks like. I'm just using like, you know, the grad tool for it, but we can also use the regular like brush tool as well. Um, we can use like, like this guy will work on that on that layer mask like if you see I, I don't know if you can tell me but it like change the flow oh we're on the fire. yeah there we go so yeah it, you can use like textured brushes on uh, the whole thing yeah so like we can make it like different than orbs like we're, we can kind of like tweak where we want like Maybe like 30% there, a little bit there. And like, kind of like use that as a way to cheat, like pull focus um, by desaturating like stuff around it. So I've never, I've never done this and then flattened it and then worked from there. Like this has always been kind of like a final step, but it might be kind of an interesting experiment just to see. So like the black layer, other than our like, you know what we did with the hair um it's still pretty black but it actually is is getting messed with by this thing yeah it is getting messed with a little bit so we are gonna have to like that is gonna be in there permanently um unless we preserve the black and whites which may, oh we already did oh we're one step ahead of ourselves past nick filardi comes through we've we've mind hacked all right so let's take this, flatten it, 
Well, should we flatten it? What if we do another adjustment layer? And did like, like a, a darken kind of thing. Oh my god, I'm deep on this now. So I do a lot of this stuff for um, for uh, the realm. We use like a lot of adjustment layers and stuff. Um, now we can kind of like tweak the. Yeah, yeah. Now we're now we're starting to end up in like a place where I was excited about for this, where we're putting a lot of drama into the face. Um, we're gonna back up a little bit though. We're gonna we're gonna be a little bit more purposeful. Yeah, we're starting we're starting to cook. Uh, let's Oh, we can just use the flat layer. I am moving a little fast on y'all, and I apologize for that, but I kind of want to just like we've been we've been going over like tips and techniques a lot and and now I kind of want to just go. <laughs> uh just kind of like try stuff out. So we're start we're starting to get there. I think it's gonna need a grad from the bottom to like really tie it in together. Um, let's try that. And I think we're gonna uh, shamelessly steal from uh, my good friend Megan Hetrick. Uh, a little bit and maybe try to make like a little bit of rim lighting around there uh, the advantage of going like third or fourth or fifth or whatever is you can kind of steal what works from the other colorists in the jam so you know I'm not I'm not above it all right all right let's um, kind of multiply down we're ending up in a place that's like very dark for her. Um, it was like a colorist jam uh, that a couple of people had done like months ago. That I just was slow on the slow on the uptake. Uh, Megan Hedrick isn't even a colorist. She's a she's a painter, and she she did one, which was awesome. But. Uh, yeah, it's it's like it's not a colorist jam that uh, I think I'm going to like I kind of want to I kind of just wanted to do this cuz I was hyped on the new mutants. Um Oh man, it still says that I updated the thing. Are you sure it says that? Hold on. All right. I updated the information. Hopefully it's changed. Maybe I didn't click the button. We'll see. Yeah, Me Megan is Megan is fantastic. We we work together on a uh, uh, Red Thorn. There's too many names, man. Too many names floating around, and uh, I absolutely fell in love with her work. She like she draws in a really interesting way that like takes color very very well. Um, she was she might not be like the like flashiest fan favorite colorist but she is in my top five to color like it her works like just takes color so so it like i think it's because she is a painter and it like has this kind of sculptural quality to it um so yeah she's fantastic i can't say enough good things about her um I think we're going to yeah yeah she can uh, yeah I think she's coloring it in a way where she's thinking about or she's drawing it in a way where she's thinking about light sources and that kind of thing um, I'll work on I'll work on anything she wants me to 
she she is a pleasure to work with so we we flattened it and like the black layers got a little bit of gray in it but that's that's fine we can we can work from here um we're just kind of gonna we're gonna kind of what are we gonna do I kind of want to go in and like pop highlights and pop the drama and put like detail into it so I think that's what we're gonna do um the watercolor and stuff down here was a little bit uh splotchy but like now we've pulled all the focus successfully to the face that I don't even think it matters what we did down here as long as it's like gestured in it's probably fine um let's uh let's do some cool stuff with the earrings um let's take like our good old uh kate 2 brush kante 2 in the dry media and kind of like tweak the earrings yeah the overall picture is pretty dark we're gonna we're we're going dark to light right now um what was the virtue of flatting it? Uh, what do you lose by not keeping the layers? So flatting it just kind of like gave me a roadmap for like what we're what we're gonna be doing, um, and like kind of sectioned off places that we were going to be uh, painting so that I wouldn't have to like bleed. I wouldn't be bleeding into like other places on in the thing. Uh, but um, the reason I flatted or the flattened it is because uh, I don't want to get confused by the layers, <laughs> basically. Like, I don't want to have to, I don't want to put down, like, we're putting down um, red kind of like beads in the earrings kind of thing. Like, they're not really, be we're just putting down red in the earrings. But, you know, um, flat flattening, flatting, oh, flattening. What's the virtue of flattening? I'm getting to it. Uh, I just, I want to be able to like put down highlights and put down, um, you know, color in a way where like, I'm not going to get bogged down in like, what layer is this? How do I, you know, I put down all the red. Now I got to delete the layer on top of it. I got to use a eraser, you know, like I just want to like go, you know, like I don't want to get bogged down in bullshit. Um, so that is kind of the virtue of it. Um, yeah, so, uh, that way we can kind of like um, just kind of do what we want to do. Um, I don't know. I don't know what color the light source would be. Blue. Because we washed it with blue, so maybe it's a blue light source, but like, I don't know. Let's, let's think about it for a second and then like experiment a little bit. Um, cause like, I feel like the blue is gonna wash her out a little bit, but the orange looks weird. And I kind of just want to put a highlight. I, the reason that the shape is very large right now it's not going to be like that i just i'm trying to figure out what color is going to interact best and i guess it's maybe this like light blue Let's uh, go back to the watercolor brushes and see if there's a, a decent one that we can kind of paint with. Um, we're gonna try the, the soft 60 again. Yeah, maybe a purple to offset the yellow or green. 
This is like kind of purpley blue. We can try like a purple. That's like a purple purple. Um, screen. Yeah, purple works. Let's uh. So we're gonna fade that because that is really bright. But I don't know where we're what we're fading it to. Forty nine. 49 um, we're gonna kick it to normal and kind of like edge into that process purple was a good choice uh, do I uh, color digitally exclusive oh yeah I am a mess with when it comes to like actual paints um, it's not a good situation uh, I do like some marker renderings, but like not really more than that. Um, I do those at like shows and stuff. I'm pretty much all digital. I color a, a bunch of comic books and stuff um, that are below me right there. Um, so I like this. I like this purple. I think maybe the opacity is too high. Yeah, so this like kind of was a color jam. I don't know when this was drawn, when people were working on it, like a month ago, I want to say. Um, and I was just, at the time, I was too busy with um, the hurricane that was rolling up Florida to like get to extra stuff. Like things kind of started falling off the rails. Uh, a lot of it was like, I just couldn't, uh, like, I didn't know if I was going to lose power. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I did, like, a little bit in college, but, like, to be perfectly honest, it was, like, we went to, uh, Fake McCoy and I in the chat went to college at Savannah College of Art and Design, and, um, we drew a lot, but we didn't like get to like really mess around with any kind of traditional anything. Like it was, uh, pretty bare bones as far as, uh, everything else. Hey, Akash, uh, it was pretty bare bones when it came to like learning how to paint and things like that. We basically like the comic book program that we were in, we were in a comic book program, um, was like, all uh i don't know what the word i'm looking for it's just all black and white like uh, there was like one comic book coloring class that was like digital stuff and then uh that was like that was it that was like all the education on comic book coloring that that i got um yeah, it was it was kind of a shit show as far as like diversity of of stuff. Gildersleeve's class, I actually I didn't have a lot of Gildersleeve classes. I think I had one. Um, yeah, a little watercolor, a little uh, it, there was like a class that was like non traditional methods or something like that. That was, uh, you know, we 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 were like. Here's an acrylic project. Here's an oils project. Here's a watercolor project. And then we're done. And it's like, you don't really like learn how to watercolor from like doing one thing, you know? All right. All right. Let's. Kind of put some flex in the eye. Start to pop that, pop the eyes a little bit. This was always the goal of this piece, is that I wanted to like really pop the eyes, cause she like, she like sees into you. Um, she sees your fears, you know. So I kind of wanted to like maybe roll with that a little bit. Um, we can take this purple actually that we were using before. Um, let's put it on the screen. Let's 
so like you know i wanted i wanted like the eyes to convey um <laughs> if you only do it things once is that wrong it's not necessarily wrong you know you're just not gonna get like an education you know uh you're gonna you're gonna get i don't know like a little bit of experience with it to like maybe try it on your own like that's that's kind of how i felt about our whole education at scad was that like i felt like i was getting a little bit of experience to like be like okay now you go home and you you try to do what you're gonna do what you want to do um but i don't know if scad saw it that way it was very weird i i just felt like the whole program was very very strange um now that i'm on the other side of it it was a lot of like you can't do stuff like limiting in in a, in a lot of ways um But then you'd have like a rogue student that's like, I'm gonna make all my comics an illustrator, and it's like, okay, that's cool, but like, I don't know if that's like a job prospect. I don't know. Yeah, it like kind of, and that's the thing too is like, you're not. The other thing is is like you're not going to um, come out of school I'm putting highlights on all these separate layers which is not something I normally do but you're not gonna like come out of school and like be a comic book artist if you go to SCAD like it's not it's not going to you know like kids go to SCAD to be comic book artists and then they come out and they're not comic book artists and I think that's a a problem but like i don't think you can learn to to quote unquote be a comic book artist in like four years like walk out the door and get hired at marvel and like i feel like a lot of kids like that's what they think is going to happen um i don't know maybe they don't maybe they they have different conceptions than i did when i started but uh yeah it left a it left like a sour taste in my mouth for sure All right, we're getting there. I'm going to merge everything because, uh, like I said, it's... it's uh, I can't keep track of it otherwise, so <laughs> here we are. So, I don't know if it's picking it up on stream, but there's, like, a lot of, like, purples and blues and stuff in the skin tone... Yeah, we can't all be James Jean. Yeah, fucking tell me about it. That's some that's the struggle right there. Is is me coming to grips with the fact that we can't all be James Jean. Uh Um But there's all these like little kinds of colors that are coming through um in the skin tone that I think is actually really interesting. Uh you should Akash. You should look him up. He's known for um, playing trumpet in uh, Fake McCoy's ska band. And then some art on the side. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm co totally coloring over the line art. It's not what I meant to do. So, man, I just kind of realized that I kind of want to put eyeshadow on this, but I also don't know how women put eyeshadow on. <laughs> You'd think this would, would, would happen to me before or now as a colorist. I think they, that it goes on, on the, does it go on the eyelid like this? I think it does. Akash, you're on thin ice, bud. Are comics considered art? You're heading in. You're heading into a fucking three-hour lecture from me.
So, uh, I think we've pulled a lot of drama into the face. Um, for w I'm going to check to see how this looks in the other monitor just for a second. Um, so, let's see. Let me see the levels. So, part of the struggle that I have with... Um, with coloring on stream and coloring in real life is that like to me this looks really good on on my monitor um and we're pulling like a huge percentage of ink down but like i don't know what it looks like on your home screen <laughs> it might it might look very very dark or it might look very washed out like i can't tell um Uh, we're going to, uh, do a little bit of rim lighting around the head. Let's, but that, that means we're going to be coloring over the line art, which is fine. But like, we gotta, we gotta preserve the line art just in case we're off the rails. Um, I also kind of wanted to like experiment with the background a little bit. Maybe we should do that before we before we start like yeah before we start getting into everything and that's going on in the in the hair and everything um but shit i don't know if we should like it's already looking really good right now like this is this is the thing is like this is my problem I get to a point where it could be done, but is it done? Yeah, we're, we're at that point right now, the is it done point, where it's like, is it done? I, I don't know, is it done? I don't know. Um, I kind of wanted to try doing a, like, with that, with that gouache brush, What is it? Super dry alternate? Let's see if it's this brush. Maybe? Yeah. Um, I kind of wanted to see... Like... How exactly... Like, maybe just putting down some texture and... Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> for the gray background. I mean, like, but you know, if it was a cover, like, the background's got to be, like, that's not all on me, man. That's like, you know, it's not up to the colorist to figure that out. Oh, it would disappear on a shelf. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, but we're we're like trying to experiment here. We're not trying to like make a cover. Like making making a cover and like having it pop on a shelf is a is a whole other monster. Um I whenever I make a cover uh I always try to uh shrink it whenever I do a cover. I'll like go like this and be like, all right, is that going to like pop off a shelf? You know, like, is that going to be, you know, can I see that from across the room? Is it, is it registering as what I, what I want? Um, but like this, this, my, a cover was never my intention when we were, when we were working on this. Um, but I kind of wanted to see like how a texture would look um, on top of, like what we were doing with the grad um and maybe i could be more purposeful with my mark making that's happening right now um and i also colored up the line art cool oh yeah how was uh new york comic con Oh, that's not what we want to be doing. We got we got back up. We got back. Oh God, we can't back up.
I have to I have to hack this a little bit. We're good. Ruined. Yeah, I know. We got it. Well, there's, you know, it's Photoshop, so there's always a solution. I mean, I heard that, like, somebody, somebody went off, but I didn't, uh... Like, I saw it on Bleeding Cool, which is, like, always an indication that, like, I just did the same thing again. Damn it. <laughs> which is always an indication that, like, uh, it might be bullshit. Like, it's kind of like rumor mill, rumor mill gossip kind of thing. Um, I also think that, uh, and then I heard from one of the, one of the panelists that it was, like, it was like kind of bullshit that it was like one dude and they made it out to be like a really big deal and on, on the internet. Cause it's like rumors and whatever, you know, uh, it was, yeah. I don't know, man. Like I kind of feel like if that's what people are getting like worked up about, uh, uh, I, maybe it's because like, I don't have, um, a lot of emotional investment into, like I have a lot of emotional investment in like this into creating um, and to making the best product possible. But I don't like when it comes to like the nuts and bolts of like what retailers do and what publishers do to retailers, like I'm not super involved um, as a colorist, you know? So I don't know. It was one dude, but that one dude was insane. Yeah, okay, that's that's accurate to what I what I thought was going on. Did he just like lose his mind because of diversity? I guess. Rakes are fun for background stuff? Oh. Huh. Yeah, right now in comics, like, trying to put diversity into comics is, like, a big deal, I guess, to, like, a very, I want to say, like, vocal minority. Um, but, like, I don't know. I'm not in touch with, like, what the average... Uh, uh, you know, comic reader is like, you know, like I, my shop isn't great here in, uh, I, Iceman's kissing a guy who cares. I, yeah, I, that, that guy's losing his mind. Uh, yeah, I'm not in touch with like, like my shop here in Gainesville is not like not great. Um, uh it's okay but like you don't really like i don't really like hang out and talk comics um huh. all right let's work on the hair so i mean like i don't know what the temperature is like in the average comic shop or even what the temperature is like in my comic shop unfortunately um I mean, maybe we use this brush for the hair? No, this is like way too scratchy. But I know that there's like, you know, a, a vocal amount of idiots who are like, Iceman needs to be always Iceman and I cannot emotionally handle it if it's different. And it's like, dude, just like deal with it. You know, like if you don't want to read the comic, you don't have to it's literally there's like hundreds of comics, you know, you can read something else if you want.
All right. I kind of wanted to try. Where is it? Copyright. Yeah. Is that gonna? We're using a pink. I thought we were using a white, and we're using a pink. But that's awesome. Let's use the pink. I just double checked to make sure we were on a separate layer. Yeah. So we're we're adding a lot in, but we're gonna actually uh, subtract it as well. So. Yeah, I don't think that, for the record, for the record, uh, yeah, we're adding and subtracting. Don't worry, there's no math. Uh, for the record, I don't think that diversity in comics is a bad thing, and I think that the world is changing, um, and people are being more open about a lot of things that they weren't necessarily open about in, like, the 80s and the 70s and things like that, and, uh... I think that you know comics are are catching up to to what's going on now and they're they should you know like you know it's not i don't know it's not a hot take it's like you know just write characters that you want to write you know and if like marvel gives you the reins to x-men or iceman and you're like hey i'm thinking about making him gay and they're like hey that's cool like go for it then like you know, I'm sorry you like that one guy's upset. No, I know, I know, I know. But like some people do think it's a hot take. That's why that's why I wanted to to say something because like you know, some people are like are are like really bent out of shape about it and it's like I don't know, like all comics for a long time were like for this that specific guy who's like bent out of shape about stuff um and only for that guy and and now they're they're not and like different people are making comics now it's not just like you know straight white males um so and it's a good thing like the diversity is a good thing the comics are like fucking amazing now uh there's never been so many fantastic comics at a comic shop um like, I don't even read mainstream Marvel DC stuff that much. Um, I pick up a lot of, like, their fringe stuff, like the Mr. Miracle stuff uh, that uh, Tom King's writing and uh, Mitch is drawing. Uh, and that stuff's incredible. And it's amazing that they get to do that. Um, normally, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of, I don't know if that book would have got made, like, you know 20 years ago 10 years maybe 10 years ago but like not certainly not 20 years ago um and i think it's because you know like artists are being more artistic within the industry <laughs> exactly how am I, how am i supposed to you mean there might be a piece of media out there that i can't relate to hogwash and this is the other thing is like if you come from a, a a point where like i feel like a lot of these guys are like look you know like you are caretakers to these characters and you have to you know preserve them or whatever if you go from that mentality you're never going to take any risks with them you're just going to hand them the same thing over and over again and maybe that's what they want i don't know you know, like it's it's a it's a crazy mess, um, because of like dudes who can't just fucking grow up a little bit. I don't know. Dudes who are like too emotionally invested in the Iceman to realize that like they're not even upset about Iceman, they're more upset about just like 
fucking life. I, yeah, that's my that's my hot take. But I'm sure they would gladly yell at me about it. Um, and you know, they have a right to. They can they can not buy comics if they if they think they're bad. They can protest with their wallet like everybody else. So. I don't know if this like background is is where we want to be. I kind of liked the dark background. This is kind of an experimentation that might have gone awry. Let's try to I don't know, maybe it didn't go awry. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, I can kind of understand if you've been, like, reading X-Men for, like, 30 years and, like, Iceman's your favorite and then they, like, change Iceman and it goes against your core beliefs. Like, I can understand that you would have a problem with it. However, and this is a big however, like, Iceman is not yours, you know, it's theirs, and they can do whatever they want with it. Iceman is no one's favorite. Wow, shots fired. I like Iceman. I liked him because he was good in uh, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. He got that ice beam. You know, like, I can see... I can see, uh... You know... Like I can I can wrap my mind around someone being upset. What I can't wrap my mind around is someone then like yelling at a panel at New York Com like that is not gonna get anything done. And that person is making a fool of themselves, you know? Is this good? Are we done? Man, it's so hard to tell with art when you're done. But I also feel like I do this thing where, I don't know, I do this like crazy glowy background backlit thing. Uh, you got to go drive for four hours. All right. Do your thing, Rico. Godspeed. Um, does he have a man beam too? What about equality? Oh my god, the chat is off the rails. Uh, so like, I I feel like we ended up in a place where I normally end up with like this kind of backlit. Uh, yeah, I mean, you do got to call it at a certain point. Better done than perfect. You got to call it at a certain point. I'm going to get into that in a second because that's such like a loaded thing that I've been thinking about lately. Um, maybe not quite as loaded as Iceman being gay, but but nevertheless, like kind of kind of loaded. Um, whoa, that is a wrong layer. There you go. Um, so... For a long time in my my <laughs> not done until the character's gay. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Uh <laughs> I can't I can't. Akash, please. Um 
for a long time, I felt the same way. Like, it's it's never gonna be done until until it's like you know, it's it's we've done everything that like at at a certain point we gotta call it kind of thing, and you just gotta walk away and then you're done. But like, I got into a habit of like saying that like. You know, at a certain point you walk away and then you're done. But like the reality is, is like, well, is it, is it done? Like, that's a real question that you got to ask yourself when you're making some art is like, cause I was doing, and I mean, maybe this is just me, but like, I think that I have in me a, uh, a little voice in the back of my head. That's like, it's good enough. Just move on to the next thing. Like, we could be playing video games, you know? Right, exactly. Is it done or am I just lazy? And I'm trying to, like, wrangle that inner voice into, like, into shutting the fuck up. Like, uh, because I'm trying to make the best comics that I possibly can. And, like, it was a big deal for me to kind of, like, realize that that was happening. And uh, that, like, I started coming to that realization um something like three f- maybe five years ago and like once i started coming to that realization i started being like no let's work it till it's done you know uh my career got better <laughs> so yeah like maybe we just don't do the white maybe the white is bad like I think that exploring what we're exploring right now is like worth it, you know? I think that trying to figure out like is it done is is worth our time. Um rather than just being like, you know, throw in the towel, we're all done. I mean, yeah, that that answer probably shifts depending on workload for sure cuz at a certain point comics got to get out the door. But like we're all chilling here man this don't got to get out the door we can come back tomorrow and still work on this i'm not gonna come back tomorrow and still work on this i think i think what i'm gonna be working on tomorrow is actually uh some elder scrolls legends that's what we're gonna be doing tomorrow is playing some playing some games i do like making her a little rosy cheeked though so i don't know I think I think it's done. Still no eyes. I put a little red in there. Just I didn't put it up here. I was thinking maybe it should be blue though. Should it be blue? Get getting after me about makeup choices. This chat is brutal. I don't know what we've cultivated in the chat, but it is it is not a uh, it is not a friendly place. It is a hostile work environment. Would blue even look good? Oh man, does blue look too good? Gosh. I don't know about makeup. <laughs> like, am I do? Am I doing? Yeah, like <laughs> New Mutants by Mac. I love it. We're never done. <laughs> yeah, this piece is just gonna. We're just gonna keep working it over and over and over until we have about thirty of these. <laughs> uh, I kind of like the blue now. Is that weird? Are people gonna like get after me about makeup? I don't know about makeup. Shit. Guys, we're guys, we're really in the weeds. I think we just gotta call it. Yeah, I man. I know. I was wrestling with that. I was wrestling with adding the rosy rosy light on her uh uh yeah, makeup on everyone. Uh 
but like I don't want it to pull from the focus that's happening uh, underneath her eyes like hmm. like I kind of have a, a, a um, it looks odd yeah all right well well I was going for like a Morticia Adams kind of thing going on but like if the if the forehead looks odd we can tweak it Maybe the Morticia Adams thing wasn't wasn't totally uh, communicated. Um, all right. Let me let me focus. Let me let me figure out what we're doing here. I'm just going to try to paint it in until it looks normal. If we're really getting into it, let's let's get rid of the the selection guide. I'm clinging to this dark forehead like you would not believe but maybe you're right yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah, I kind of uh, came to the same conclusion. Like pulling the darker—that's not dark. <laughs> pulling the darker grad through the top of it, but like, yeah, just a little bit above the the eyes. Um, this part, Ziggy, is this what you're talking about? Spandex? Should I make that like a dark? Should I make that not? Uh, yeah, we can we can do that. It was flatted at skin tone, but we can we can make a tweak. Not like that. There we go. Yeah, I think that this is done. I'm all turned around now. Uh, okay. I think this is done, but let's. For argument's sake, let's save it where it is now, all right? For argument's sake, just humor me. Save it where it is now. Um, yeah, let's flatten the whole thing. Or maybe not that part. Um, I'm trying to think of a way that I can implement my original vision of like a Morticia Adams kind of vibe to it on onto the line art now at this point at this late stage in the game and there might not be uh, a way to do that. 
I'm, I'm thinking about it. I kind of want to look at a picture of Morticia Adams. Just real quick. I mean, I don't know. Should we do laser background? Should we just laser background, guys? Like, what does art even mean anymore if we're not going to just laser background done deal, right? Right? Here we are. I think we I think we nailed it. I maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Um Man, I do want to like push the Morticia Adams thing, but I think it's I think it's good where it stands. I actually now that I'm now that I'm looking at it, I'm like maybe we should do more yellow in the costume. The problem is is that <laughs> Nick maybe art isn't your thing. Thanks. <laughs> The, okay, so here's the, here's my struggle with this piece, is that I want the eyes to pop. That was my that was like my main goal, and the eyes do pop a little bit right now, but they also like are getting drowned out by the halo around her, and they're getting drowned out by like and then this is the halo is so bright that it's making the rest of her seem dull you know and i think what i wanted was originally for the whole thing to be a little dull um but i mean i don't know let's let's just we're gonna try one thing before we uh call it and we can always go back we're gonna try to do that same because the thing is, if you look at the grayscale, all right, so you look at the grayscale, right? Um, uh, like, the eyes are the lightest and darkest parts, but, like, so is this. So is her outline. And, like, I don't know if that's where we want to be. Like, I want it to feel dramatic, not necessarily feel how superhero -y, you know um let's copy this let's paste it uh above it uh and let's let's see about See, but this doesn't, this is like, this is not working. Yeah, I may just have to embrace that, the fact that, uh, oh yeah, uh, thanks for coming by. Thanks for coming by and checking it out. Um, we'll be posting up everything on Twitter and Instagram and I'll tag you and stuff. So yeah, uh, when we're finally done, but I think we're pretty close to done. Um, what I'm wrestling with is that like my original intention for what I, what I want is not necessarily where we ended up, but I mean, I think maybe that's just art. Like sometimes you end up in a place that you didn't necessarily get to and it's not wrong or you didn't necessarily want to get to and it's not wrong, but it's, it's not where you want to be. And it's just like, it's fine. And at a certain point you got to call it. I think we're going to call it. Um, let's sign this thing. I think I might toy with the idea of revisiting in the future this same piece, um, knowing what we know now. Um, where's the where's my copyright? There we go. Um, yeah, I think I might revisit. Um, pretty sure the art is wrong because it's not of a straight white male. Yeah. Uh, we're we're too deep on the we're too deep on the uh, the diversity right now. We've gone too far. Um, I think I might revisit 
and try to pull off what I wanted before in like a different way. Maybe not using, um, starting with the uh, watercolor brushes. I think maybe starting with an unfamiliar tool might have pushed us in the wrong direction or not necessarily the wrong direction, but just like a different direction. Um, I think that like, yeah, I kind of want to, I kind of want to revisit this guy. So we're going to revisit, uh, Danny Moonstar down the road and, uh, try it out in a different way. Um, so look forward to that, our, our companion piece. Um, and, uh, we'll, we'll get into that. Oh man, I didn't change. I didn't change that thing. That's what we were talking about. Yeah, this is a girl. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get into changing this art piece, uh, maybe down the road, doing a doing another version. I don't know. We'll see. If it sticks in my craw, I'll I'll it, I'll really be like thinking about it. Then I'll be like, okay, we gotta go. We gotta go back. We gotta go back. But if not, it might grow on me. I might decide that this is this is decent and we want to keep it here. Um, yeah, you never heard that expression? It really sticks in my craw. Uh, Tomorrow we'll be doing some video games, but uh, until then, uh, I'll see you guys uh, on Twitter. My Twitter's right down there, Nick Phil. Um, I'm on Instagram, Nick underscore Filardi, uh, and we'll be posting this up there. So you can see it not streamed. It'll look better on there. So, yeah, check it out. Uh, later, guys.